All right, everybody. So essentially I want to make a small quick video on what you need to do to make some money in order to upgrade your homestead and purchase all of the upgrades through Abraham. So currently in game, it's a little bit later in the day, so we cannot go visit Abraham. But I do wanna just kind of like give you a quick update. I have upgraded the homestead um, to basically add on an additional canopy over here. I still cannot go inside of the house and interact with anything unfortunately i hope that that's something that comes so it does appear to be another room right over here but like i said i can't go in there i have added a little bit of decoration on the patio i've got this nice little storage area over here which if you're going to be trying to make money I do recommend having some storage that way you can put things that you want to sell in the boxes and organize them nice and neat so as you can guess the main source of income you're gonna get is through your crops though I don't think it's the way that you think it's gonna be not like in Stardew Valley where you can take your crops and just sell and make a pretty good profit you're gonna want to turn them into like a recipe you're gonna want to cook with them or make something with them to increase their value to sell. Although this is a cozy game, it is still kind of a survival game. You are having to contend with a constantly hungry character. You have to forage for a lot of your crops and you have to work those crops as well, not only just by watering them, but also by using magic on them. It sounds absurd, but it's great. The way that I have made the most money is probably not been like a super structured way like most people would make guides and in Stardew Valley and be like, to make the most money, you wanna make ancient fruit wine. That's the one that's gonna make you the most money. I really was not paying attention. I was just taking whatever was readily available on my homestead, crafting it into something, making as much of it as I possibly could, and then taking it to Abraham to sell. So one of my daily routines is to run through the forest here and gather up as many apples and onions as I can get my hands on. I will go past this little area where we have our metal bushes because I don't sell my metal all, I just use them for crafting recipes. I grab as much birch and wood as I can because I make lots of birch beer. And then down here, there's a saffron plant. And up around this birch tree and around the bend, we have another birch tree. So I take full advantage of that and the catnip flower that I just ran past and the grilled onions. And once I gather all of this, I make my way all the way over to my cauldron. I said cauldron. I did not mean cauldron. What is the one that you cook with? The cooking station. I fly all the way over to my cooking station. And thankfully right now I have to, I'm going to build another one so that I can just have constant production happening. Um, you know, think like Stardew Valley or My Time at Port Show where you just have like a crafting area that's full of all these stations. But I will run to my grill and just make whatever I can make that's a complex recipe. For example, if I have lots of apples, instead of making the um, grilled apple, I will make the apple butter because it gives me more silver than the grilled apple. As far as like vegetables go, I make tons and tons of roasted tomatoes and grilled onions. Um, or if I have all of the ingredients, I'll make tomato soup because that fetches a fair price as well, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Uh, it's essentially, anything that I make, I just go down the list and I make the most complex recipes first. And then whatever's left over, I make those individual recipes and I just load up. And then as soon as Abraham shows up, I make sure to have my pockets full of whatever I'm gonna sell and I go sell to him. He is not here yet, but he is on his way. You can also use the package hutch, but I have noticed that you don't get a fair return for like some of the stock market crops that they request uh, versus just making like, okay, so the last one I did was like, you could send out 10 ears of corn every single day for seven days and they would like double the price for you or whatever. I made 36 silver. I could have made like probably 60 corn puddings and made a whole lot more money than that. So I'm still not totally clear on the package hutch. I'm not sure about that. Um, okay, so in Abraham's cart, you know, we've got lots of cool... Uh, oh, I would actually love to buy that. I am saving up the cactus soups for one of the package hutch quests. Even though you don't make money, I just want to have it done. Uh, I don't have the recipe for this yet. So anytime I see recipes... That was very loud. Anytime I see recipes in his 
shop, I buy them because the more recipes you have, the more money you can make selling those recipes. If I were to sell some of my recipes, like my um, birch beers fetch me 12 silver, so that's one I take advantage of a lot. Um, another one I do is I have tons and tons of lavender plants, so I make lots of lavender tea, I make lots of saffron tea. The lavender tea gets you 6 silver, saffron gets you 7, the roasted tomatoes get you 9. Corn stalks, I still don't do anything with those yet, so I always sell them. Cotton, I sell just on their own because I don't have a way to make linen yet. Um, I can buy it in his shop, but I am just waiting until I get the mill. I think that that's going to help me make linen. Anywho, they will fetch you 2 silver, but because I'm not doing anything with them, I just sell those crops as is. One that's super surprising to me is a grilled onion, so you can get 10 silver off of a grilled onion. That's incredible. It's interesting that it's more than the boiled cabbage, which only fetches you six silver. So I don't usually sell my bo boiled cabbage unless I absolutely have to because I use that to feed my constantly starving character. At any point, if you have an item, you can click on it and it's going to tell you what the value of it is. So the ripple spell potions are 20 and the shadow spell potions are 25, but keep in mind you have to use silver in your potions, so I don't recommend selling them. The Waymakers are 10, I don't really do anything with them, so I guess you could do that, but I think that their ingredients require things that are in the miasma. Oh, you cannot sell your stations that you make, so just be aware of that when you're making them, you cannot sell them. I don't currently have these more complex recipes, but like I said, you do need to be trying to find those recipes in the miasma, or buy them from Abraham if they show up in the shop so that you can make some money. But yeah, your metal bushes can fetch you two per cluster. The birch bark is four and the wood is two. So like it's just anything that you have on its own is not going to be very valuable. You have to do something to process it to make more money. It's not like Stardew Valley where you can take your ancient fruit crops and just sell them and make bank. You've got to do something to increase their value. Usually what I do after I have foraged for all the things around the homestead and put them in the cooker to make food or my crops to make food. I will take a trip down through Pearl Canyon which is now cleared and I will go ahead and harvest Oh my gosh. I hate when I'm trying to do something and I'm accidentally talking to Huck. I will go ahead and harvest the like cactus fruit, which is down here. There is also tons and tons of yucca trees, which I find yucca to be really good to make. The fried yucca, which is great for eating. It's also great for selling. Some of my favorite things to harvest are the little incensier bushes, which we have over here. There's one here and then there's one a little bit further off. And essentially you can make more teas with that. Even though I'm not making a lot of money from each individual tea, I do like to sell the teas because I feel like it's so easy. Like here I'm getting five chamomile flowers off of that bush and then I can make five chamomile teas for like let's say they're six a piece. That's 30 silver and essentially I did nothing for that. It was so easy. It's just all here and readily available. So the only thing to keep in mind is that when you're trying to make money you are going going to be spending a lot of in-game days doing nothing but just farming and foraging. Think of it like, think of days like in Animal Crossing where you're just trying to harvest fruit and make money to pay off your house. That's essentially how I'm looking at this. There are so many days where all I do is just make money. But I might be a little bit different because what I like to do is I like to try and make all of my purchases at once in this game so like you know I'm trying to upgrade my farm and also purchase all of the character upgrades like the potion of strength and proficiency which is going to add inventory slots and a spell slot so those are basically my main focuses I like to just go ahead and make all those purchases get them out of the way and then that way I will eventually move on to the new area with new miasma down here in Pearl Canyon. 
So I showed this off a little bit in the last video that I did um, about how to clear the miasma and how to get your broom. But essentially this is the new area. So not only was I able to upgrade my base camp back at the house and the homestead and turn it into an actual house, I did purchase the new base camp down here by the new area. So if I want to go into the miasma, I can. And let's say I get really tired and I just want to make it back and go to sleep and save my property. Progress, I can do that because I have the base camp over here. So let's just go ahead and make our way back over to our other homestead. I do want to make it clear too that you cannot place any of your workstations down at your other base camp. It will not let you and it does say um, too close to or too far from home. So essentially, I know that this is not your typical video that it's like super structured and telling you exactly what you need to do. I think it's pretty much just more free form and just kind of like, it's more just like using what you have on your homestead and near your homestead to make money. And it is not only just a super cozy game, but it's also a survival game. So that kind of adds a little bit of a challenge, you know? You're not just gonna be rolling in the dough and have all of these upgrades. If you want a decorated farm, you have to get your materials and make your decorations on your own. And when you use them, you know, it'll eventually start to look more unique and look more cozy. If you want to make lots of money, you're going to have to work hard by tending to your crops and using magic. And it's just, it's definitely a grind. And a lot of people don't like that, but honestly, I love it. I was able to make the purchases that I made and also upgrade my home in a matter of like maybe six in-game days and I did that all by watching a stream on my phone so I was kind of like not bored the entire time I was just playing it and also watching that and it definitely reminds me of how many just days that I would spend in Animal Crossing over and over again just every day I went through my routine of you know going through my orchard and picking up all my fruits and crafting the hot item of the day and fishing and all of that stuff this has got that same kind of vibe to it anyways I still have probably about if I had to guess, I still need to save about 5,000 more silver and I've currently got 529 so I still have quite a ways to go. This has basically been my short sweet guide. Sorry if it's not been that structured. I do apologize. But I hope that you guys are still enjoying this content. I have not been playing that much because I've had a pretty crazy work life family balance issue going on lately. But I hope that y'all are having a great day and a wonderful week. Let me know in the comments below what you think and stay cozy my friends.